All right, Newton's second law of motion. Here we go. We're talking about acceleration. Uh, a lot of people have a hard time with this page. I'm not sure why. I know it's confusing at first, but it's one of those deals when you get it, it's like riding a bike, and then you don't even have to think. You just do it, right? So we know in terms of acceleration, acceleration equals the force of the object, the force you put on the object, divided by its mass. In other words, in other words, it's directly proportional to the force. I push harder, accelerates faster. Makes sense. And inversely proportional to the mass. It gets heavier, it accelerates slower. If you've ever uh, had to push a car, maybe you ran out of gas or whatever, you know that the harder you push it, the faster it accelerates. And you know that if you're pushing a car and all of a sudden its mass doubles, it's going to accelerate half as fast, right? So that's inverse relationship. So looking at the first one, the acceleration object is blank related to the net force upon it and blank related to the mass. So in other words, directly related to the net force, the more you push, the faster it accelerates, indirectly or inversely, actually inversely, not indirectly, inversely related to the mass. The heavier it is, the less it accelerates. So let's do a few of these. Notice all of these, they start with eight. It's accelerating at 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, right? So let's do A. The object is accelerating at 8 when suddenly it has the force on it increased by a factor of 2. That means they double the force. It doesn't mean they add 2. It means double the force. So it's accelerating at 8, and all of a sudden you double the force. Whatever you do to force, you directly do to acceleration because it's a direct relationship, remember? So with that being said, if you double this, you just double this. So that means the new acceleration is going to be 16. I don't even have to think. Let's look at D. Uh, actually, let's, let's just go through them, whatever. An object is accelerating at 8, and the force all of a sudden is increased by 4. Well, if you 4 times this, then you 4 times this. So 8 times 4 is 32. There you go. So far, so good. Let's keep rolling. It's accelerating at 8, and the force is decreased by a factor of 2. That means it's cut in half. So if you half the force, you half the acceleration. So the new acceleration will be 4. If you get the hang of it now, just pause the video, do them all, and then you can check them. Because it's a lot more fun knowing you got it right rather than just like seeing the answer and writing it down. That's not that fun. All right, an object is accelerating at a rate of 8, and its mass increases by 2. So if you double the mass, remember, inverse relationship, double the mass, half the acceleration, which means our new acceleration will be 4, right? Double the mass, half the acceleration. Inverse. E, it's accelerating at 8. Its mass is decreased by 4. 4 times less mass equals the acceleration times 4. So we're going to be up to 32. Number F, letter F. It's accelerating at 8. The force is increased by 2. So right off the bat, I know I'm doing force times 2. Or acceleration times 2 because of the force. And its mass is decreased by 4. That means... If its mass is decreased by 4, I'm going to do times 4 to the acceleration. I'm just going to do that. So you're going to take your 8 and you're going to do times four, 2, and then you're going to do times 4. So you should get, so 8 times 2 is 16, times 4 is 64. Very good. 64. All right, an object accelerating at a rate of 8, and its mass is increased by 2, which means divided by 2. And then its force is increased by 4 times 4. So your new acceleration should be 16. And 8. H, sorry. An object is accelerating at 8. Its net force is increased by 3. So now we have times 3. And then its mass is decreased by 4. Now it's times 4. So times 3, then times 4. You should get 96. Very good. Okay, let's do the last one. So, uh, the 
pretty much we're ranking these in order of their acceleration. So remember, more net force equals more acceleration. And we're going to rank these in terms of acceleration to the right. So not just acceleration, we're talking about acceleration to the right. All right? So in terms of acceleration to the right, let's all we're going to do is look at the net force because we don't know the mass. I'm assuming all their mass, actually all their masses are the same because all their force of gravities are the same, right? Oh, there we go. Since they all have 50 force of gravity, we know their masses are the same. So we're not going to worry about that. So this has a net force of negative 20. I say negative because it's to the left, right? Negative just means direction. This has a net force of 0, 50 and 50. This has a net force of what? 30. To the right, and D has a net force of what? 15 to the right, because that's the difference. This one is 15 bigger, so it's 15 to the right, which means we're doing largest acceleration to smallest. So the large acceleration would be C, would be C, and then it would be D, and then it would be B, and then it would be A. The reason A has the smallest acceleration, because remember, again, we're talking about acceleration to the right. So since A is accelerating to the left, technically it has negative acceleration, right? So C, D, B, A. Hopefully that makes, if it makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. All right, you guys are good to go. Hopefully you got something out of this. Let me know if you guys got any questions.